this way. And I know that Adam gets stuck. Um, <coughs> work. I think he was here last time. But every once in a while, his schedule rolls around where he can't be here. But, um, we, we can't have it, uh, you know, we can't individually schedule it. So, so this is uh, where we are at the current time. And so I hope, I'm glad you're here and hope others will come in. Um, I'm in Colossians chapter number one. Colossians chapter number one, and I don't, we don't, this doesn't have to be a dead and uh, uh, a formal thing, you know, this is, ought to be a lively thing. Yes. Amen, ought to be a lively thing. We serve a risen Savior, right. and we're, we observe this, uh, uh, we observe the, uh, his death until he come. So we, we know that he's resurrected, he's coming. So this is, ought to be a lively thing, not a dead thing. So if you have a testimony, or if you have a favorite uh, number of song that has to do with the blood or the death of Christ or the resurrection, uh, you, are, you are certainly free uh, to uh, uh, take part in that way. Let us know, all right? I don't know if anybody has any special prepared for this morning, but uh, certainly we'd welcome that and any of your testimonies, how you came to know the Lord, or the, some some uh, some special thing the Lord has done for you. All right, I'm in Colossians chapter one, and I'm reading uh, from the uh, 14th verse. And notice that His blood is here mentioned in the 14th verse, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. See the firstborn there in verse 15, the firstborn there in verse 18 as well. He is the head of the body of the church who is beginning the firstborn from the dead. And, and both of these have to do with being the first cause, not, uh, not uh, the uh, first person being born physically, but the first first cause, for he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So he is our, our Savior, the Lord Jesus, is the creator. All things were made by him. Without him uh, not, was nothing made. John chapter number one. Amen. For by him were all things created uh, that are in heaven, verse 16, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and, you say that with me, for him. All things were created by him and for him. Boy, we just get up every day and say everything, we, everything that I have is for him. Everything that God gave me is for him. Everything that was created is for him. And then verse number uh, 17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Uh, the Lord Jesus is himself is the glue of the universe. Not only is the creator of the universe, but he holds it all together. Everything is held in his hand and by his hand. If he were to let go of it, if he were to take it, if the power of the Lord Jesus Christ were to be denied to the creation, it would just, it would dissolve or explode. I don't know what would happen to it. But uh, he, he makes it stay together. And we know one, one of these days uh, that this world will be on fire, the universe will be on fire. And they, all that could only happen if he lets go of what's happening to hold it all together. One day that's, that's going to take place. And so uh, that's the power of our Savior, by the way. That's why we know he's, he saves. Um, we, uh, we visited through this part of the trailer park last during uh, one, one day this last week. And then uh, Friday we attempted to go through some. We hit a few doors over on the other side. But... Um, I couldn't, I couldn't go any farther after about five or six doors. My hip had gotten out of joint and I couldn't 
go on. So we had to go do some other things. But I just continue to pray for these people in the trailer parks. And I'm, I'm uh, been in this thing a long time, been around people a long time, been worked in four countries, and, and uh, including our own. And so I don't, except for Christ, I see, I see no hope except for Christ. And the uh, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. And this world is, is not getting better, you know, it's not getting better. This world itself is actually is morally imploding. And we can thank God for a couple of good uh, Supreme Court decisions. I don't want to get off on those kind of subjects. Yes, we're, yes. Supposed to, we're trying to remember the Lord. I'm trying to remember the Lord. But this, um, we, we, thank, we thank the Lord for the couple of good decisions that allow us to operate more in freedom and get the word of God out. And that's what I'm talking about. Yes, yes. Where I have no interest, I have no interest in being free except it be for my Savior. Because all things are created by him and for him. Even our country, even our even our freedom is for him. It's not for us. But see, most most Americans, and I, I sad to say most people in churches think that that's, that freedom is there for, for their vacations and their frolicking and their world travels and their game playing and all that. But that's not, it's, it's for him. It's for him. But they don't know it. They don't know it, you see. And so they can't get the blessings of it. They can't walk with, they don't walk with the Lord. They can walk with the Lord, but they don't, and they don't get the blessings of it. And there's nothing more blessed. There's nothing more blessed. All right, so it says in verse 15, he's the firstborn of every creature. And then let me read um, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead. Yeah, so he's, he is, the Lord Jesus Christ is not the first individual who was risen from the dead. You know that. But he's the first to rise and die no more. Think about that. Right? There, are, there are several resurrections recorded in the Old Testament. There are several resurrections recorded in the Gospels. The Lord raised folks from the dead during his earthly ministry. But you know, you know who is the cause of that? He himself, because he is the resurrection and the life. The only person who is the resurrection and the life is the Lord Jesus Christ. So every resurrection you read about in the Bible, he is he's not only the cause of everything you see created, but he's the cause of everyone you ever uh, have read about in the Bible that has been resurrected. And, uh, and there were some resurrected, uh, there were some resurrected after he rose from and there were some in a couple in the book of Acts that died and, and they were raised from the dead. Now think about that. And one of these days, though we die or our body dies, we shall be raised from the dead. Those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our body, that's that's the salvation of the body. That's, that's the blessed hope. And we shall see that. So it says in verse 18, he is the head of the body of the, the church, uh, which is, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, that in all things he might have the preeminence, which uh, corresponds with all things were created by him and for him, doesn't it? Say. So it, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Uh, and not all, and, and here the, the reference in verse 18, of course, is the church. And the Lord Jesus Christ ought to have the preeminence in the church. But he, he won't have the preeminence in the church if individual Christians don't give him preeminence in their life. When they show up, have they already been giving him preeminence in their life? For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. It pleased the Father that in him, Christ, should all fullness dwell. So if you have Christ, what do you have? You have the fullness of God. You have all the fullness of God if you have the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the fullness of the Godhead. For the Lord Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, which you read over here in the second chapter. And so if you go down to verse 20 now, 
and having made peace through the blood of his cross, we'll be dealing with that in the Lord's Supper, having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. What does what do wicked works do in the minds of people? They alienate people from God. Uh, just like just as uh, well, it's actually a weak correlation, but if you are if one of your children is alienated from you because they are have, have done something, committed something, gone somewhere that you do not approve. You've told them not to. They, they avoid you because they know that your discipline will come down. And man, man knows or man has a sense of his wicked works. God gave man a conscience. Thank God for the conscience. And so men are, men are actually they alienated and enemies in their minds by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. So God has fixed that, but they don't know. They have to know God has reconciled them unto himself. In the body of his flesh. When did he do that? In the body. So we're talking about the broken body. We're talking about the shed blood. So he did that in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not, not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. What a fascinating fascinating passage of scripture. But in here we have the body of his death. We have the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the elements of the Lord's table. And so we're to remember these things until the Lord comes. Amen. So we keep preaching these things. You know, so people say, well, why is he always preaching on the blood? Why is he always preaching on the death of Christ? Well, we're going to do more about that, more, more of that this morning. And uh, I just, I couldn't get settled last night. I was praying. I sat back there for hours trying to get something settled between me and the Lord. I was thinking about these folks in the trailer park. I, in fact, I got in my car this morning. I went around the trailer parks again. I rode around the trailer parks again up here and prayed again for the people in these trailer parks. Up here. And they're not the only ones in town, are they? we got people all up and down these roads. But... I prayed specifically for those that we've knocked on the doors, and it's not the first time we've done that. It's been about eight or nine times we've been through these trailer parks. And uh, there's a turnover, you know, there's a there's a quick turnover in the in a lot of those trailers. So we're not we're not always dealing with the same people. There's there's new people uh, and we left packets. And uh, just just pray with us and pray that we, pray we continue. Join us in that. I'll talk about that a little bit this morning, a little later on on uh, event on evangelizing folks. All right. And the Lord just said, the Lord gave me a, something to do this morning. We'll do that. All right. So you see the elements for the Lord's table in this passage. You see the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see the body in the body of His flesh through death. To present you, this is what happened. That's what he did with his body. He died. He allowed his body, his life to be taken from him so that you and I could be presented holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. How in the world, <coughs> well, I should maybe should say, how in heaven <laughs> could a sinner like me be presented holy and unblameable? and unreprovable in his sight because of the merits of Christ. Because of the merits of Christ. I'm almost convinced that uh, the idea of merit 
uh, in work. You know, they, the woke, the wokeness, all this woke stuff is trying to destroy the system of merit in companies and colleges and everything else. Now, our merit does not save us, only Christ's merit. But I think the, the whole, you know, when the devil works in such a way in this world as to destroy, to try to destroy the understanding of certain terms and systems, uh, he's also trying to blind the minds of those who believe not. And so people, people get to where they forget what merit means. What does merit mean? What does merit pay mean? What does merit mean? And you, using that word is important. It's, it's important so that we understand it is not our merit, but Christ's merit. Christ has all merit to save sinners. And we have zero. We have no merit to save ourselves. We have nothing with which to stand before God. And we sing about that. We sing about that in our invitation hymns. We have no merit. He has all merit. He has the merit that pleases God. And so verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Amen. And he's living today, and we remember him, and we don't need pictures of him. We have, we have descriptions in the Bible. What descriptions you might read in the Bible are sufficient. We don't need artistry. We need faith. Amen. We don't, we, we just, we don't need it. We don't need our minds to be entertained. We need our spirits to be illuminated by the words of God. And so that's, that's how we operate. And so I'm not, if you have a, don't, uh, don't take me wrong. If you have a last supper tapestry or painting in your home or something like that, that's not, that's, we don't we don't mind about that, um, but we don't in our in our raising of our children we don't we don't need our children to get uh, an image that is a man made image. We just need them to have faith in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the all the image we need here, all the image we need is here in this in this chapter from verse number fifteen all the way all the way down through, okay? And uh, so uh, a, lot of, a lot of the imagery of man has really become idolatry over the centuries, and that's, that's a problem. Okay, well, that's where we are. I wonder if someone might have a song, or, uh, or David, you have a hymn to lead us with? with regard to the Lord's Supper this morning and anything about the blood or the, or the death of Christ or the, I mean, someone might have someone on their heart already. Someone might have one that they're thinking of. It doesn't mind if we sang it last time. We can, we can sing the same one, same While they're getting ready, I have a few verses I'd like to read. Romans 5, 6 through 9. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Did you read all, how, how far did you read that? Verse 9. Read verse 10. <coughs> For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. There you go. See, there's that. I wanted to read that because that <coughs> corresponds with what Paul wrote in Colossians in, verse, in chapter 1, verse number 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind. But when we were enemies, God did what? He reconciled us unto himself by the death of his son. Amen. So when we were sinners, uh, the three things there, verses 6, 8, and 10. Right? What are they? <coughs> Christ died for the ungodly. The ungodly. 
enemies, sinners, sin sinners the yes. ungodly, sinners, and enemies. Amen. And that's what we are before we're in Christ. We, we don't like it. The world does not like us. Use it. Wor worldly churches and actually the, the religion of the world does not like us saying it's uh, looking back on ourselves in the mirror and seeing what God sees. But that's what God sees of the lost man. All right? But God also sees man is reconciled. So man doesn't have to stay the, in this position he's in. God's already fixed it. So man can be justified. Amen. Become a child of God. Amen. But if, if men don't come to the, to the understanding of their ungodliness, the fact that they are sinners, they are sinning rebels against God and his holiness, and that they are enemies and Paul said their enemies where? In, the in their mind. In their mind. They're running from God. They're looking over their shoulder all the time. When's God going to get me? Now they might, they're not thinking that. But they're afraid and they don't know. They don't know why they're afraid. Mankind is afraid. All right. Uh, you have a hymn? I'm going to move a little slow. Can I just set my Bible? Okay. All right. How about 305 in your uh, church hymnal? 305. The old rugged cross.
testimony, some thanksgiving to God. Uh, I'd like to give my testimony. Uh, I haven't gave it. I don't think anybody's <laughs> heard me, so if I ball, <laughs> it's all right. It's good. You know, the Lord is good. And, uh, I was a church kid, you know, uh, they would pick me up when I went for about three months. Uh, my brother decided he was going to church and he said I had to go with him. And I said, all right. You know, so I went with him, and uh, like I said, it was about it, just like these, you know, you talk about these trained little kids, you know, and I was thinking, you know, all these bus ministries, and, you know, they pick up kids, you never know, you know, you just right. never know how that affects their life, and, um, but anyway, during that time, you know, it was so weird, because, you know, the adults, they would block them off in one room, and they would be in one room, and they'd take the little kids to this room, and they'd take the younger kids to this room, well, I was a baby. I was terrified, so I lied about my age so I could be in with my brother and sister. <laughs> so I went into their Sunday school with them. And, uh, you know, but it, but it affected my life. And, you know, the man that was preaching up there, you know, he preached Jesus, you know, and talked about our sin and talked about hell. And, you know, I believed and I trusted Christ. And, you know, I raised my hand and I did go to the bathroom. He did open the Bible and he shared the word of God with me and you know, I trusted Christ then and there. Amen. And um, but you know when you're not in church, when your family's not in church, it affects your whole life. Yeah. And uh, that was all the church I had. And I was attacked. <laughs> Satan attacked me, that's for sure. And my life after that it was pretty much noisy. The only thing I remember from back then was a song of Father Abraham. I didn't know who that was. But, you know, just those songs are so important. Um, I sung about Father Abraham all the time. He didn't even know who he was. Mm -hmm. um, but from then on, you know, I got into the world. You know, I was in public school, and the things that were said on the bus affected my life. And that was the direction I went. Um, it affected so many things in my life. You know, uh, just horrible. <laughs> You know, and when I got older, you know, I hurt myself, I hurt others around me, those that I love. Um, and I told the Lord, I said, you know, if I'm going to hell, I'm not letting my babies go to hell. I always took my kids to church. I didn't know how to raise no babies. I had babies. But I didn't know how to raise them babies. All I knew how to do was just them to Jesus. That's all I could do. I said, Lord, and I still tell them to stay. They're, they're growing, but I tell them, you know, I told you. I know how to raise them. I just promised you Jesus. And that's just a few that prayed for them, prayed for them. And then I uh, went to several churches, you know, just taking them here, taking them there, just just searching, you know, just searching. And uh, I hated myself. I hated the things that I've done. I didn't even want to be around myself. So I started doing drugs. And I would stay high because I hated me. I didn't want to be around me. Still take my baby to church here and there. You know, still take them. One day my husband came home and he would go to his friend's house. And he came home and he wouldn't go to church with us. You know, he went enough to where we got married. <laughs> Cause that's what they require at that time and um, I'm not here to keep face my husband he's a wonderful man and I love him so much if it wasn't for him 
There's no telling where I would be right now without that man. But anyway, he came home one day and he had this piece of paper and he said, Honey, he said, if you find this man, I'll go to this church. And I was like, <laughs> What's going on, Lord? You know, I so prayed and cried back and forth. I'd take him babies, take him babies, little like this, and carriers, and drag him to church and cry all the way there and cry all the way home. God knew. God was working. You gotta let God work. When, well, at least me, you know, I always try to make it work and it don't work that way. <laughs> but he came home and told, gave me that piece of paper and he had preacher's name on it. And I called preacher up when I said, I don't know where you go to church at. I said, but I want to know if it's okay if we go to your church. I think he just swore. What? I ain't never had nobody call me up and ask if it's okay if I go to church. <laughs> But I did, and um, I asked him where it was at, and he said, would you all mind following me? So me and my husband and my two babies, we followed him, went to his house, and we followed him to church. Preacher till this day still doesn't know how bad I hated myself. He didn't know I was doing drugs every day because I didn't want to be around myself. I just hated, you know, I just, there's no hope for me, but. There was going to be hope for my babies. But the preacher just preached. He preached Jesus. And I just listened and listened. And I didn't know the Bible stories. I couldn't tell you any. All I knew was Father, Lord, and Jesus. <laughs> Maybe sins. That's all I knew. I didn't know about Noah. I couldn't tell you any of those stories. Tell me I knew well. Oh, he preached Jesus. He preached about the woman with the well. Preached about them crumbs, and I opened up my Bible, and God allowed me to hear the word, to listen to what He taught me. Amen. God taught me as Amen. I read through the scriptures. And the first time through my Bible, the word that came out to Moses, God said, Come, come, come. It didn't matter what, what chapter and what book I was in. Yes. Come, yes. come, come and to the Israelites. He's got that stretched out hand. Jesus, come to me. And I was like, You don't know me, what are you? No, my life's a mess. I know I deserve to go to hell. Come, <laughs> come, come. You know, it's just that open, just loving joy. And I came to him and I said, All right, Lord. I believed him. I believed him that no matter what I had done, how I hurt myself, how I hurt others, his mercy and his grace was there for me. And I just can't believe that, you know. Till this day, I'm a mess, and I'm told people, yeah, but I'm, I'm God's mess, but I'm a big mess, but I'm God's mess, and, you know, he's, he's there for me, and I just, you know, I love him so much, Lord, and I think about the, the creditor that had the two debtors, you know, and I love him so much, because there's so much I've got to be thankful for for him, and it's just come to church, you know, it's just... That's a blessing. I just think our people don't see that, you know. It's a blessing just to be in God's house. You know? I didn't think I should be able to walk through the front doors. But he said, Come. Yeah. Thank the Lord. You know, he's, Amen. Just, he's been so good to me. You know? Amen. So those ministries are so important. You know, you never know looking back. You know, I, I can see God's hand. He's been with me no matter what I've been through. And, you know, no matter what wickedness, rebellion that I've done in my life, he's he's still there and I can see him and he's just he's amazing. You know, I just I don't deserve heaven at all. <laughs> and I'm still in awe of how he could just do something, how he could do something like that, how he could go to the cross for me. <laughs> you know, it's just sometimes I just wonder how low we've all got to go, people. <laughs> <laughs> just look out, look up. You know, Christ is the answer. Like he said, no, don't be set apart to pray the parts. You know, just they need Christ. They're still breathing. They, you know, Christ can help. Christ is the only one that can help them. That's you right. know, they can just hear God's word. And That's just, right. Come, come, come. Um, you know, they may be the same way I was. You know, just there's no hope for me. So they go to wherever else. You know, they never heard the word of God. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. You know, 
My mom and dad worked all the time. We were left there, and that's that's bad enough. <laughs> Sleep there, that's bad enough, you know, being left there, you know. And, uh, but I love my parents, you know. And, you know, I love them to death. And, you know, my mom got saved, and my dad told me he got saved for the first time. Uh, whenever I had my scope done, before I went in, my dad called me. He said, I'll be praying for you. It's the first time my dad ever said that in my How whole about that? life. How about that? The first time I heard him say, I'll pray for you. That's God. Takes time. Takes time. You know, I used to think I could drag people. <laughs> you know, come on, come on, come on. But it's in God's time and too. He said, but keep praying. You know, keep praying. <laughs> Sorry. You're all right. You're all right. God is good, and I'm just so thankful to God. It's all about Him and what He's done. Amen. Nothing, nothing I can do could ever throw my way. Amen. Thank you for Him. Amen, Jesus. Well, y'all can sit down a minute. I should have had you sit down there. We need to go. And the testimony of God's people is very important. And some of you have uh, most, maybe most here have heard me say, but uh, my dad was, my dad who's going to be 95 in September was saved at the age of 45. And he was saved. The instrument, the instrumentality of him coming to the Lord was that a church had a Friday night get together. I don't know if it was every week or if it was once a month. I don't remember now. And I wasn't at home at the time. I was off in the service. But the uh, people in the people in the church where I grew up in uh, decided to have a, you know they would rotate it from home to home, just on a Friday night, and they would just play games. They just gathered. They drink coffee and eat lemon meringue pie, probably, and uh, just. Uh, chat and talk and they'd play simple games, you know, they'd play Scrabble and Parcheesi and all those things. And then um, one or two, never more than two, but always at least one during the night, someone would stand up and it would be planned so that the believers that were there would know what time, you know, people, people knew. Some of the, there were unbelievers there that were invited that didn't know what was happening, but most of the believers knew at a, certain, at a certain time, everything would come to a standstill and somebody would get up and tell how they came to know the Lord and just take a minute or two and they'd tell how they came to know Christ and they would sit down and the games would continue. <laughs> Later on in the evening, if they were going to have two, later on in the evening, someone you know, would come to a standstill again, and someone else would just take a minute or two and tell how can they came to know the Lord. Uh, that, that minute or two or sometimes two times a minute or two during an evening never upset my dad because my dad just loved to be with people, and he knew these were church people. But the Lord used that, and it worked on him and worked on him, and worked on him. Uh, until one Monday morning, I was getting off a midnight shift. I had climbed into bed. I was in Missouri, and Dad was in California, and the phone rang upstairs. Some of you, most of you heard me tell this, and I heard it ring, but I was about half asleep already. And someone pounded on my door, called my name, told me there was a phone, phone upstairs was for me. It was just a pay phone in a corridor, on a stair landing, actually. And so I grabbed a pair of trousers and threw them on and ran up there and grabbed the phone, and it was my dad. And I thought he had never called before, so I thought something must be wrong. But he, he said my name, and he said, I just called to tell you I got saved. That was a Monday morning. He got saved on that Sunday. And uh, 
didn't didn't tell me all about that. And but when I later, when I had my family out there, got married and had our children, and two children, and third on the way, went out there. And then we heard more about that, you know, what what the Lord used. And so my dad used to argue for Catholicism. I mean, he would sit, sit at the table and someone would bring up something and my dad would defend the priesthood, defend the confessional and confess. He never went. <laughs> we never, other than to a wedding at a Catholic church, we never saw my dad go to church. But he would defend it, you know, because he was brought up under French nuns, French Roman Catholic nuns. And uh, so he was, you know, he had that beat into him, you know. And uh, so the Lord unshackled that, let him, let him come to Christ. She said, come, that's what dad did. He just came to Christ. Amen. But you know, for someone to come to Christ, you have to admit you haven't been in Christ. You had never come to him. You're still lost. Dad had to admit that he was lost. And religious, religious to some extent, you know, in, in that he would defend his religion. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the blood does that, doesn't it? And Christ saves, God saves us for Christ's sake. We ask the question, why does God do that? We ask it rhetorically, we ask it in song. Why did God do this for me? And so forth, why, why would God save us? Well, God doesn't save us because there's, in, because, remember, it's not because of our merits, but just as David spared Mephibosheth for Jonathan's sake. God spared us for his son's sake. See? And so that's in Second Second Samuel, I believe it's chapter 9, and you go read that about Mephibosheth and David, and there's the picture of it in the Old Testament. Amen. So for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, God will save an old sinner but he saves by his blood. Blood can never be neglected. It's true. God had to, God had to shed, and it was the blood of God. Acts chapter 20. He had to shed sinless blood as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. And that he did. Because our blood was polluted with sin. And so we were unclean every whit. God shed sinless blood and poured out his wrath on his own son so that you and I could know Christ. We could know him. All right, anyone else? We'll have one more song if we won't delay anymore. Is there, we got one more song, David, and we'll sing that, and then we'll uh, go to the table, go to the Lord's table. Hey, 379, the church hymnal 379 on the bottom there. There is a fountain. <laughs>
chapter number 10, verse number 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. And that's why we start, not all churches do it this particular way, that's up to them, but that's why we start with one bread, amen, one loaf of bread. We want you to know, we want to emphasize that there is a communion in the cup which we bless and there is a communion in the body in the in the bread that we break amen and it's in Christ that communion is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ so this is for the saved this is not for the unsaved it's not a sacrament by the way this will not save you will not even contribute to your salvation but it is a remembrance and it is a remembrance that we're told to keep we are enjoined by the scriptures to remember this until Jesus comes. So over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord, the, the apostle Paul didn't get this from the other apostles. He got it directly by revelation of the Lord. That which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. So we are showing the Lord's death till we come. So the Lord giving us help and grace will continue to observe this. We, we don't observe it every week, some do. And we could observe it every week. We could observe it more often than that. But we, the Bible just gives the injunction as oft as ye eat this uh, bread or drink this cup. All right, so it is, it is left to the liberty of the believer, the liberty of the church. It was done on the first day of the week, however, by the churches in the New Testament, and this is the first day of the week, all right? So it's not on the, it's not, it's not on the Hebrew Sabbath day that's done. It is done on the first day of the week because that's when the, Believers of the New Testament did meet to worship together. And they used the Sabbath sometimes. The early Jewish Christians, of course, used the Sabbath to go to the synagogues or go to the temple witness to the Jews and be used of the Lord there to, uh, to enunciate what God had done by the Savior. Okay? So put these on. I've already cleaned my hands. I've washed my hands, used alcohol, and alcohol gloves. Amen. So you, won't, you won't get it that good in the bakery. Amen. So let me, let me have David uh, help us here. He said, when he had given thanks, he break it. So we're going to have a word of thanks. I'll ask David if he'll give the, the Lord thanks for the for the bread, and then I'll give the thanks for the cup. Father, we do want to remember you, Lord. Um, this the bread that this picture your broken body. Father, for us, this has been spoken of already and given in testimony to uh, Father, that we we love you because you first loved us, yes. and you loved us by showing your uh, you said you gave your son. To us, and you were delivered up um, to to death uh, on the cross, and your body was broken there. Uh, and yes, in this physical life, Father, but 
even the work that you did there on the cross of justifying, making, making us right with you, Lord, to be able to come back to you again, Father, through that. We are thankful, Lord. I am. No others are. And Father, we sure do want others in this community that's been spoken of this morning to know it also and the ones that live around about this region uh, of our counties and big cities. Uh, Father, help us as we give the gospel uh, of this, uh, of the cross and of Christ and his blood uh, to them. Father, I yeah. pray that you prepare their hearts, Lord, and let Lord. men and women, young men, young women, to uh, have a desire to understand and know Lord, as we know, you and your broken body. Father, help us, we pray with you now, to uh, stop and uh, Father, examine ourselves as you say, but also to enjoy you uh, while we do this to remember. Father, just as a remembrance, that's all. And not as a sacrilege. Right. As a way of Thank you, Father. making me right with you. Pray, I'm thankful that I don't have to. Father, we already do. Yes. It's just by faith. Father, help us, we pray, that we would, with this, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, verse 25, so we'll have prayer for the, for the fruit of the vine as well. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ by which you redeemed us we acknowledge and believe, Lord, firmly there could be no redemption without that blood, that holy, sinless blood. And as Paul said to the Ephesian elders, the blood of God, for Christ our Savior, is God manifest in the flesh. Thank you, Father, for his sinlessness. Thank you, Father, for his, uh, for his uh, fullness that he has and and has had, Father, all along, Father, the fullness of the Godhead. We thank you, Father, for that sinless blood. Thank you, Father, for the redemption that there is there. 
And thank you, Father, that even today we can account our sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said if we would confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that cleansing, Father, we acknowledge is comes from the comes from that first chapter in the same book of 1 John, that it's by the blood, it's all by the blood, Father, that shed blood that you accepted as a token of the righteousness of thine own Son, the Savior, Father, the righteousness of our, Savior, uh, of our dear Lord. Thank you, Father, now for the time to observe this. We ask, Lord, that you'd help our hearts to understand it fuller and uh, with greater gravity and Father, seriousness in all that we do in our Christian lives. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, the words of the Lord. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And he went on to speak about it being what we do till he come. Amen. We remember him till he come. So we'll do this, we we'll try to do this every month. And uh, we had let it go for a long time only because I kept waiting for people to, to be here. <laughs> but I just decided we're just gonna do it. And we just have to trust the Lord to bring folks in. So we thank the Lord for your being here. And uh, amen. Let's just sing it. Uh, we don't need the piano. We just sing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. Dave, you need it? Can you get a note? <coughs> Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. Oh, 
come back. Okay? Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, your table, our Savior's table. And we ask the Lord you'd help us to uh, continue to be conscious of it through the day. And we ask the Lord you'd strengthen us by it. We ask the Lord you'd help us. Now let's take a little break to love on one another and to consider others and to come back, Father, for a little while in the Word of God, worshiping in Jesus' name. Amen.